Imagine we have a positive charge in this region. This positive charge generates an electric field in its vicinity. If we wish to find the electric field at point P, we begin with Coulomb's law and then use the definition of electric field to calculate the electric field at point P. In our class, when we say current, we are actually talking about conventional current. And conventional current refers to the motion of positive charges in a wire or in a circuit. Though in reality, electrons are the ones moving, we can picture the motion as if protons are the ones hopping in the opposite direction, and that's conventional current. Consider this portion of wire that can conduct charges. By default, a charge has an electric field. But when the charge moves from point A to point B, it generates a magnetic field. Actually, a stream of moving charges generates steady magnetic field, or a constant current generates constant magnetic field. So I'm just showing one moving charge for clarity. For this system, what if we want to measure the magnetic field at point P? Do we have a Coulomb's law version for magnetic field? It turns out that the analog of Coulomb's law for magnetism is an empirical equation called the Biot-Savart law. To intuitively derive the equation for Biot-Savart law, consider a current carrying object like this wire. Based on experiments, it produces a magnetic field that somewhat circles along the wire. If I want to measure the magnetic field at this point, then the strength of the field must be directly proportional to the strength of the current. Also, the strength of the magnetic field must also be dependent on how far away you measure it from its source. Experiments reveal that magnetic field is inversely proportional to the square of the displacement. Now let's consider an infinitesimal element of current and call it dl or vector dl later. Let's transfer this dl here and draw the direction of the current element. Let's try to calculate the magnetic field produced by this current element at this point. We denote magnetic field as dB because it is produced by a differential current element. The measurement point is at a distance r away from the source. The direction of displacement vector is r hat and it has a unit of 1 and it does not go all the way up here. The purpose of r hat is just to tell us a direction. That's why we're just using r hat instead of a regular vector r. With respect to dl, the direction of this magnetic field by convention is dl cross r hat. Using right hand rule, you point your thumb along the first term which is dl and your fingers along r hat. When you bend your fingers perpendicular to current and r hat, that's the direction of the magnetic field. So based on this setup, the direction of the magnetic field at this point is out of the page. So right now, the variables are complete. We can now write dB in terms of current, the distance r which is presented here as 1 over r squared, the cross product that determines the direction, and in order for this relationship to become an equation, this right-hand side must be multiplied with a constant. Here, we represent this constant with letter C. And this constant is experimentally determined to be equal to 1 times 10 raised to negative 7 Tesla times meter over ampere. And we often write this constant in another way. And this is C equals mu naught divided by 4 pi, where mu naught is called the vacuum permeability. And based on this numerical value, mu naught is equal to 4 pi times 10 raised to negative 7. It is oftentimes written this way so that it is symmetric with Maxwell's equations. These Maxwell equations are the equations that govern electrodynamics. So what I mean by symmetric is that we can conveniently connect this equation with Coulomb's loss permittivity of free space to forge a relationship with the speed of light. This equation here is what we call the Biot-Savart's law. It completely gives us the magnetic field produced by a current element dl whose magnitude is directly proportional to current, inversely proportional to r squared, and whose direction is determined by the vector cross product dl cross r hat. So let's have a quick example. Let's determine the magnetic field due to an infinitely long straight wire using Biot-Savart law. An infinitely long wire is comparable to a long wire if r or the distance where we are supposed to measure the magnetic field is very small with respect to the length of the wire. So consider this imaginary coordinate system. Along the y-axis sits an infinitely long wire with current pointing to the positive y-direction. 
we would like to measure the magnetic field at point A, a distance away from the wire. And let's begin by calculating the contribution of an infinitesimal current of length dy. And this dy is at a distance r away from our measurement point. Writing the formula of B of our equation, we start with constants. And then current I, which is also constant, divided by R squared. Our infinitesimal element DL is dy in this setup. The cross product of dy and r hat can be written geometrically as sine theta, where theta is the angle between r hat and dy. Now let's examine this equation. To get the total magnetic field, we have to integrate both sides. On the right hand side, current is constant, so I can take this out of the integral sign. But dy, sine theta, and r are all changing when I vary dy. Hence, we have to write r and sine theta in terms of the integration variables like dy or y. Let's begin with r. In this figure, dy is y away from the origin. Hence, these three sides form a right triangle. Using Pythagorean theorem, r is equal to square root of y squared plus a squared. And we can plug this to our equation. Next, we would like to replace sine theta in terms of constant a and variable y. Based on this triangle again, sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse or a over square root of y squared plus a squared. And we can plug this to our equation. Then let's multiply numerator to numerator and then denominator to denominator. Integrating both sides of the equation, we will have b equals mu naught times current times a divided by 4 pi integral of dy over quantity y squared plus a squared raised to 3 halves integrated from y equals negative infinity to positive infinity. Let me rewrite this expression here. For simplicity of calculation, let's evaluate this integral from y equals 0 to positive infinity and just multiply the result with 2. Since we're evaluating the bounds in half, we multiply it with 2. To evaluate this integral, we may use an integration technique called trigonometric substitution or simply use the table of integrals. I created a video deriving this relationship. The link of the video is in the description box below. So this integral here is in the form of integral of 1 over quantity u squared plus a squared raised to 3 halves and it is actually equal to u over a squared times square root of u squared plus a squared plus a constant. So this tells us that the integral of 1 over quantity y squared plus a squared raised to 3 halves is equal to y over a squared square root of y squared plus a squared. Let's multiply this inside terms with 1 over y divided by 1 over y to segregate y into only one term. If this is infinity, then such term will become 0 and we'll end up with 1 over a squared minus 0. So essentially, you'll end up with 1 over a squared. Let's replace this integral with this result of 1 over a squared. The a in the numerator cancels out and the a squared in the denominator becomes an a. And we have b equals mu naught i over 2 pi a. Remember that A is the distance of your measurement point to the current source. This equation, again, is the magnetic field due to a very long wire with current I. The magnetic field is measured with a distance A from the wire. This equation is valid when A is very small compared to the length of the wire. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and hit the notification bell button for awesome updates. Thank you for watching.